In this video, I want to discuss the high level differences between designing a system for scalability versus designing a system for performance. If the load on your system grows close to the capacity of your system, you will typically have to address that situation by increasing the capacity of the system to make sure the system can continue to handle the load that it receives. You typically have two ways to increase system capacity. One, you scale the system up or out, meaning you add hardware to increase the system's capacity. Or two, you optimize the performance of the system to increase its capacity on the hardware it's already running on. In some cases, you may actually have to do both. When increasing the capacity of a system via scaling, you can either scale up or scale out. Scaling up means using a more powerful server or servers than the system is using today without increasing the number of servers. Scaling out means adding more servers to the system. Scaling up is also referred to as scaling vertically and scaling out is also referred to as scaling horizontally. Increasing a system's capacity via scaling up or out is also sometimes referred to as throwing hardware at the problem. Throwing hardware at the capacity problem is also sometimes referred to as throwing money at the problem, because hardware costs money. But this means that growing the capacity of your system also grows its operational cost. Designing for performance, on the other hand, has the opposite effect on your system's operational cost. If you increase the performance of the system, you may actually be able to keep your current hardware, or sometimes even be able to scale in, meaning use fewer servers, or scale down, meaning use less powerful servers. Designing for performance is also sometimes referred to as applying skills towards the problem or throwing skills at the problem. In other words, when you apply skill, you are trying to solve the capacity problem of your system by being clever. And when you are throwing money at the problem, you are trying to solve the problem using brute force. What is most interesting about designing for performance though is that it has a downwards pressure on operational cost, whereas scaling a system up or out has an upwards pressure on operational cost. As mentioned earlier in this video, even if you design your system for performance, you may eventually have to scale the system up or out too, because you might reach the upper load limit of what a single server can handle. However, if your system is well optimized, your scaling cost will be lower than if the system is not as well optimized, because each server added to the system will be able to handle more load in a well optimized system than in a less well optimized or non-optimized system. So, to summarize, designing for performance gives you more cost effective scalability because you need less hardware for your system as the load on the system grows. Because you need less hardware, your carbon footprint for the system will also be lower. And as a final advantage, it makes your team learn more about how you can squeeze out as much as possible out of the hardware. And that means that your developers will end up becoming smarter than if you just try to solve all the problems through scalability. Obviously, designing a system for high performance is not free. First of all, your developers need to learn how to do that and they also actually have to optimize the system. So the system cost, the development cost, the initial development cost might be higher for an optimized system than for an unoptimized system. So if your system has low workload, maybe it is not worth the money that it costs to optimize the system. You might be able to solve the capacity problem cheaper through hardware for a while. But if the system at some point grows really big in load, at some point out here, the number of servers needed to increase the system's capacity through scalability will start to outweigh the cost of um, performance optimizing the system. And so at that point, it starts becoming a better business to design for performance than it does to design for scalability or to only solve the problem through scalability. Because as I mentioned, you might actually have to do both. So you will, for each of your systems, have to perform this kind of calculation yourself. Um, but I just want to say that um, 
even if it costs some money to learn how to optimize a system uh, or to do performance optimization in general, sooner or later the developers will have learned these tricks, these techniques, and it gets easier and easier to, um, to develop high performance software at a cost that is not too different from the price you would have paid initially without knowing anything about how to do performance optimizations. So I consider it a good investment in the future. And personally, personally, I prefer to design first for performance and try to squeeze as much out of the hardware as I can before I start thinking about scaling out. It may not always be a super good business decision in the short run, but in the long run, it's usually it's usually not a completely bad financial decision either. That is all for this video about designing for scalability versus designing for performance. Remember to check out the description below this video for links to related tutorials. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to watch more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.